Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Here's an awful sound. But the rears have plenty of pad remaining. What's screeching? Well, the rear calipers tend to seize up as they age, and when that happens, the inside pad on the back of the rotor, the one you don't see, ends up doing the majority of the work until it wears down to nothing. By this point, the rotor is usually shot as well. So today, I'll show how to replace the caliper, rotor, and brake pads. Last week, I showed how to primer and paint these new calipers and rotors so they won't rust like the old ones did. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Let's get started. First, I like to crack the lugs loose with the car on the ground. Then, once I have the car on jack stands, it's easier to get the lug nuts off. Set the e-brake to keep the rotor from turning. This is an impact driver. When hit with a hammer, it uses that force to turn the screw. It's very useful in removing these rotor screws, which are usually seized thanks to rust. There we go. I used to drill these out before I discovered this handy little impact driver. 20 bucks well spent. California viewers, you can probably just use a regular Phillips screwdriver, you lucky bats. Never know the struggle of rust. And the same for the second screw. I can release the e-brake now. I'm blasting the e-brake cable with light here so you can see this metal clip. Sometimes, if you're lucky, it pulls off with just a pair of vice grips. But Ohio Winters have decided that I'll need to use a big old flathead screwdriver and a hammer to break it loose first. All right, now vice grips. There she is. Now with the vice grips, I can grab the metal fitting and slide the cable off the slot on the bracket. And then the end of the cable comes right off of the hook on the caliper. I've got a 14 millimeter wrench here and I'm just gonna crack the brake line banjo bolt loose while the caliper is still bolted to the knuckle. It's much harder to do after the caliper is already unbolted. Now I'm gonna loosen the two bolts that hold the caliper to the bracket. Sometimes these will turn the pin too. So you might have to hold the pin with the wrench to break the bolt loose. The caliper is no longer bolted to the bracket, so I can remove it to get a look at these pads. Or pry it off with a flathead since it's so rusty. A lot of times, the sliding pins inside the bracket will seize, which means the pressure isn't applied equally from both pads on each side of the rotor. That is exactly what has happened here. The outside pad looks fine, while the pad in the back of the rotor is completely worn down. There is zero pad left. That's why it sounds awful, even though it looked like the brakes were okay from the outside. Inside these brackets, there are floating pins that slide in and out to apply equal braking pressure on both sides of the rotor. There is grease coating these pins that degrades over time. I mean, think about how hot these parts get from braking. When the grease goes bad, the pins don't slide like they should. And that's when the outside pad takes a break and the inside pad does all the work. Sometimes fresh grease can get things working again, but with these calipers having 150,000 miles and being so rusty, I'm going to replace everything while it's apart. If you're just replacing the pads, you can swap the new ones in and put everything back together. If you're also gonna replace the rotor, the bracket needs to come off. The bracket to knuckle bolts are pretty tight and rusty, so they need a little convincing with a hammer. Here's the rusty bracket with the worn calipers still in it. To the scrap pile. Of course, the rotor is rusted to the hub. The rotor does have two threaded screws that you can put two bolts into and tighten down evenly to push the rotor away from the hub but I don't have any bolts that match that thread. I'm gonna give it a few light taps around the edges of the rotor to help break it free. I'm being sure not to hit it hard because the wheel bearing feels the impact and that's not something I wanna replace. Here's what the backside looks like. 
really rusty, and there's actually a chunk missing right here. Before I put the new rotor on, I need to line up the screw holes, then slide it over the studs. Before I reinstall the rotor screws, I'm putting some anti-seize on the threads. That should make it easier to remove them one day in the hopefully distant future. Just a good hand tightening with the impact is fine. No need to torque them down. Now I'm detaching the brackets from the new calipers. These are the ones I primed and painted silver in the last video to hopefully keep them looking like new through an Ohio winter. So here's the new bracket. I need to bolt it to the knuckle and I'll be reusing the original bolts for that. First, I'm cleaning up the threads of those bolts with a wire brush to get any debris or loose rust off. And now some fresh anti-seize, really a staple among states that use road salt. I'm starting the bolts by hand so I don't cross thread them. Then tighten them down to 28 foot pounds. These are the anti-vibration shims. The brake pads sit in these. One goes here and here. Now I can install the pads. Be sure the outer curve matches the rotor so they're facing the right way. The inside one has the metal wear indicator tab on the bottom. And these just sit in here like that for now. Now comes the time where I need to get the old caliper out of the way and that's going to require the removal of the banjo bolt for the brake line. It would have been harder to crack it loose without the caliper attached to anything. The fitting is actually seized to the caliper. Thanks, Rust. Don't forget to put this clip in the new caliper. It helps keep the pads in place and reduce noise. I'm getting the caliper set in place for right now. And putting the top bolt in by hand to keep the caliper from falling while I attach the brake line. Here's the old banjo bolt. I'll clean some of this rust off with a wire brush. Be sure to get the old copper crush washer off. I sprayed the bolt with some brake cleaner to clean it off. Get that hole in the middle too. Now I'm cleaning up the fitting and the inside too. Dirt is not good for braking systems. Here's the banjo bolt with a new copper washer and it goes in the fitting and the other copper washer goes on the bottom of the fitting. And the bolt gets threaded into the caliper, just by hand for now. Then tighten it down to 25 foot pounds. Now that I'm done dripping brake fluid, I'm taking this bolt back out. I'll apply some anti-seize to both of these guys and tighten them down to 18 foot pounds. Next, put the e-brake cable fitting onto the new bracket. I'm using a big flathead screwdriver to turn the spring-loaded hook toward the end of the cable. And it hooks right on. That was actually a lot easier than the way I removed it. Here's a better look at where that screwdriver goes. And don't forget the metal retaining clip. Press it on to start with. And then a few taps with a hammer to get it seated in place. Now it's time to bleed the brakes. First, top off the fluid. Then have someone press the brake pedal down and hold it. Next, loosen the bleeder valve to let the air out. Did you hear that? That was all air. Now, tighten the valve to close it. With the valve closed, it's okay to let off the brake pedal. Repeat the process, press brake, open valve. Mostly air again with a tiny amount of fluid. Repeat. There's some fluid. And some more fluid. Still some air bubbles too. Keep repeating this process until no more air bubbles come out of the bleeder valve. Depending on how much fluid came out while the line was disconnected, this could take a while. Then finally, when only fluid comes out without any air, the brake line is bled. That's it for this side. I can put the wheel back on and torque it down to 80 foot-pounds for the OEM wheels and lugs, or if you're running aftermarket wheels and lugs, tighten to the manufacturer's specs. Then repeat the process for the passenger side. Thanks for watching. Please hit like if you found this helpful. Post any questions you have or comments below. I read them all.
consider subscribing for more how-to videos and project vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage.